Susan Neiman, do, do you actually still have a point on this? Or, or, yeah, you well, do. I, I had terrible trouble understanding what was being claimed, actually, and I'm very glad that a physicist also found it problematic because uh, I, ha I, I have no background in physics, I have no background in neurobiology, but I do know something about Plato, for example. And I sort of understand what it means to say that uh, certain values are embedded in a platonic universe. I don't know what it means to say that, uh, what was it, Kabbalic wisdom is in string theory? Well, th or my point there was that many, many cultures have something. Native Americans have this, Hindus have this, Buddhists. Everybody has something like this. Well, something like what, though? I mean, something I, I like felt platonic, a little... Platonic information embedded in the Planck scale. Something that could be explained by that. Um, look, I felt a little bit like Richard Dawkins talking about religion, that is, and saying, you know, if we have perfectly straightforward explanations of this, why do we need to appeal to religion? We can't I felt like appealing just to the religion and the philosophy because I didn't see what work the science was doing. So what would it mean to say, I mean, I have an idea of just, let's go back to Plato, I have an idea of justice, right? Um, and let's say that uh, I believe everybody's born with that. I mean, in a Kantian uh, understanding of what Plato was doing, I actually do believe that. Now you're telling me that somehow the universe has what exactly that corresponds to my idea of justice? I can answer it for uh, mathematical truth, which is what Roger raised in the first place in 1989. That's, he said the mathematical truths, platonic values, exist uh, not, in the not just in an abstract realm, but physically in the, in the structure of the universe. And then later, ethical and aesthetic values were added in, as well as the, the, the precursors of consciousness. What does it mean for them to exist in the structure of the universe? Well, I mean, they're exists mirrored, in the structure of the universe. they're like... Pardon? Well, well, everything exists there. Ma matter comes out of that, energy comes out of that. If, if, if you have a quantum superposition that collapses due to its own uh, uh, self-collapse, Roger's objective reduction, that's defined as consciousness. So we have an, uh, a definition or an explanation of consciousness that has ontological distinction. If that happens, it's conscious. It's not just, oh, you get enough computation, co consciousness emerges, which is what the neurocomputationalists say. So we're giving an ontological distinction. If this particular type of collapse that Roger proposed exists, that's a conscious moment. It can happen to an electron, but it takes 10 million years. I don't have time to go into the details, but it's all on, on, in the papers on my website. Andrea? I, yeah. uh, first, I just want to say that um, contrary to what was suggested earlier, we do seem just, to be Could you just? Oh, sorry. I'm Andrea Hassenstaub. I'm a postdoc. I'm a neurophysiologist. Uh, so we do seem to be exploring some fairly far-flung regions of hypothesis space today. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, um, it seems to me that what you said is that gap junctions are required for the generation of the gamma oscillation and that the gamma uh, oscillation I, I, I is the neural that. correlate of consciousness. So if this is what you're saying, then it's extremely easy to test, and in fact this test has been performed hundreds, thousands of times every day. The test that you would perform is to administer a drug other than an anesthetic that also has the side effect of blocking gap junctions and look at the effect of administering this drug on consciousness. Um, well, the drugs that they use for prophylactics against malaria, the quinine and quinine derivatives, are extremely potent gap junction blockers. They get into the CNS, and they have dozens of kind of horrible effects on people's um, psychology, ranging from delusions to outright psychosis, but they do not uh, coincide with loss of consciousness. Is this consistent with your theory? First of all, there's, there's at least, uh, can I answer? First of all, there's at least 10 different connections so it, what, a drug may bind one type of gap junction, not another. There's a knockout mouse model that knocks out connection, connection 43, and uh, it, those mice are, are uh, they're very messed up, but as far, we, we don't know if they're conscious. They, they behave, they survive. But the, again, there's like, there's 10 connections and another group called panexins, and it's unclear whether any lesion or any drug affects all of them. So uh, what you said doesn't invalidate what I said. Um, and, it's true that the, the uh, connections, um, there are dozens of them, but there's, for the most part, with one or two exceptions, only one is expressed in neurons. That's connection 36, which is blocked by quinine. Uh, connection 43 plus a bunch of panexins. I reviewed this not too long ago. Okay, then this is getting a little bit sophisticated for me. <laughs> um, 
Uh, I'm Sora last Koch. Question. I'm a postdoc here at SOC, and my question is basically an extension of what she was saying. Oh, well, that, do, do are you, you sure that's not going to get even more sophisticated well, then? Do, do you think Drosophila is conscious because they have gap junctions? Because they what? Drosophila. They have gap junctions. Yeah, made uh, well, of that's a good question. Um, you know, at what level of evolution does consciousness appear? And uh, in the model we have, consciousness uh, is defined by E equals H over T. E is the gravitational self-energy of the system. H is Planck's constant over time. So if you set time equal to 25 milliseconds, you need about uh, you know, 100,000 neurons worth of microtubules in superposition. So if an electron were in superposition it could, uh, and isolated, it would have a conscious moment, but only after 10 million years. So uh, it's a trade-off in, in evolution in terms of a, a, a system large enough to provide, uh, to reach threshold quickly to be useful, um, but also to avoid decoherence, because the other problem is you have to be isolated. And dendrites in particular are very well suited to avoid uh, decoherence because there's actin gel around the microtubules and they have the gap junctions and so forth. So um, I have a paper uh, where I uh, did consciousness cause the Cambrian evolutionary explosion. Because when I calculated out the, the level at which uh, the system gets large enough to reach threshold in a reasonable time, like a couple hundred milliseconds, is about a 300 neurons. And if you look at the Cambrian evolutionary explosion, uh, small worms and urchins that appeared at the very beginning of the Cambrian explosion were about that size. So I would say the cutoff probably is, is roughly at that level of 300 neurons. Okay, but, and I don't know if, if neurocomputationalists can even hazard a guess because there's no, there's no testable prediction, there's no threshold even suggested from neurocomputation for consciousness. Okay, I think we'd need to move on to Ramachandran at this point. Thank you, Stuart. You're welcome.